everyone. Welcome to Detroit Startup Week. I'm Dawn Verbrigge, and I'm the founder and CEO of Jotful. I have a background in marketing, and at Jotful, we work with small business owners, typically really small businesses, Natalie, right? Like 10 employees or fewer. Yes. Why are you laughing? You're laughing. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> this is my colleague, Natalie. Natalie, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, sure. <laughs> I am Natalie. Um, as you can tell, we have a lot of fun together <laughs> at yeah. Jotful. We were telling jokes before we hopped on this, and I am still laughing from them. So at Jotful, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I work with customers, and I, t I talk to customers basically all day, and talk to sales prospects all day, and I could tell you something fancy, like I do customer and business development work, but actually I just talk to people all day long about yeah. problems and how we can solve them, uh, and everything that has to do with websites and email and domains and hosting. And I love to tell everyone that I'm not technical. And <laughs> that my favorite thing now is when our customers say, but you are totally technical. Yes. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love when the customer compliments you. Right. No, you're doing a good job. <laughs> You really have no idea. Um, anyway, today we are here to discuss how you can avoid uh, wasting money on marketing. And I tell you, I hear this from our customers all the time. People have spent mm -hmm. so much money on marketing. So it's a really important topic. And if you can help us, please do. Yes. So um, we're going to talk about marketing budget. Where does it come from? How much should you budget for marketing? What activities should you spend that budget on? And then who's going to do this work, right? But we're going to start with a little bit of math. Uh, math. Math. <laughs> yes, we're going to start with a little math. But I promise you, is this is an equation that you learned when you were very young. But if you're like me, you didn't actually understand it until you became an adult. And it is this. <laughs> Right. Time equals money. The reason why I ask us to keep this in mind is because, especially when we're really early on in our business, we have a lot more time than we have money. But time actually has value. Your time has real value. And the time that you're spending on marketing is time you could be spending doing something else, or maybe that's something that you could hire somebody else to help you out with. So that's one of the most important things to keep in mind when you're setting up your marketing budget that sometimes you're putting in time instead of money, but that's still an expenditure that you're making, right? So, all right, all right, all right, all right. If that's the case, how much money should you spend on marketing? Well, this is important. Marketing is an investment. I cannot tell you how important it is to keep that in mind. So often people think of marketing as an expense and when the downturn happens, the first thing they cut is marketing. But marketing is not an expense, it's an investment, which means that the money you put into marketing needs to come back to you in the form of customers. So we spend money on marketing to acquire new customers, to retain those customers, and then to convert those customers into loyal, loyal customers who refer you and help bring in more customers, ultimately. Mm -hmm. So marketing is an investment. <clears throat> so uh, how, do you talk, how do you figure out where you're going to spend your marketing dollars? Well, one of the biggest um, questions that I hear is, Dawn, we get all of these people knocking on our door, right? And my, you know, my favorite example is you've got the, the little league kid. And oh, he's adorable, right? And he comes to your door and he says, we need money for our uniforms. And companies tend to take that money out of the marketing budget. Somehow, all of these things come out of the marketing budget. But I ask you, is that, is that something that is actually going to result in the acquisition of new customers, retaining the customers you have, or taking those customers and making them loyal referrals for your business? Oftentimes not. And so... If we're wondering about those kinds of expenses, sponsor, all these sponsorships, I would actually take that out of the marketing budget and look at it separately and have a process, a really well-defined process. Because mm -hmm. it's very hard if you have one employee who comes to you and you fund their kids, I don't know, 
Christmas program, right? But then another one comes to you and needs money for something else and you don't fund that one. It's really difficult for those employees to understand why you're funding some things and not others. So have a clear process for that. Mm -hmm. And then once you take that aside, then look at what's actually your marketing budget. And I would look at it two ways. The first way is top down. Um, this is really taking a swag at your revenue and saying, what percentage of our revenue should we spend on marketing? And the answer is, mm -mm. you have a guess? Mm, no. The, <laughs> I, I worked with no. years. <laughs> Maybe I should. No, no. <laughs> because it's going to vary a lot depending on a, a few different factors that we'll talk about. So can you see my chart, Natalie? I can. All right. So these are people who are going to spend more on marketing. These are people who are going to spend less on marketing. And the type of business you have is going to determine whether or not you spend more or less. If you sell to consumers, you're probably going to spend about double on marketing as a company that sells to large businesses. Hmm. If you're a new company, so you're just starting out, you have no brand awareness, nobody knows who you are, and obviously you have to create a name for yourself, that's, that costs money. Mm -hmm. So you're probably going to spend about double what an established company would spend. Interesting. So yeah. do you think that's covered some in uh, sales? So like bigger people who are selling B2B, um, is there more of a spend on sales and less on marketing? Oh, great question. Yes. B2B is going to have more in sales than in marketing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially enterprise B2B where you have outside sales reps, right? Although nobody's an outside sales rep today. Right. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, high companies in high margin industries are going to spend more than companies in low margin industries. So software is a classic example of a high margin industry. And those companies are going to end up spending a bit more on marketing because they can afford to spend more on marketing and then you just end up with this competitive situation, right? Where you, you need to spend more in order to compete. Mm -hmm. If you're on the low end, you're going to spend maybe between three and 6% of your revenue on marketing typically. So that's your B2B and I mean B to big B, right? Not small B. Uh, B to big B, you are established and you're in a you know, low kind of medium profit margin, three to 6%. It could be as much as four times that if, you're, if you sort of tick off all the other boxes. You sell to consumers or very small businesses. Um, you're a new company that's just sort of just getting your name out there, and you're in a higher margin industry. Yeah. So that's the top-down approach to budgeting. Let's talk about the bottom-up approach to budgeting. This is probably what you're more familiar with. This is where you take a spreadsheet, you line up every month, and you come up with an estimate for how much you're going to spend on marketing every month. You'll look at things like, oh, you know, we have this conference scheduled in June. So in June, our marketing expense is going to increase and you're going to put some money there. And then you're going to take it, you're going to expand it a little bit, right, to give yourself a little bit of cushion. But the key point here with this bottoms up approach is do not plan everything. <laughs> what? activities should you plan for and not yeah so first of all let me say the easiest way to waste money on marketing if you get nothing out of this talk make it this the number one way to waste money on marketing is to spend it targeting the wrong people <laughs> so make sure you have an extremely good understanding of who you want to reach with your marketing dollars and make sure that whatever campaigns you run are targeting those people specifically. And this is where, you know, the sponsorship of the little league becomes a really good question. Is that really marketing? Well, if your customers happen to be little league sports fans, yeah, then it's probably a marketing expense, right? But if your customers are not necessarily little league sports fans, then that's probably not where you want to be spending your marketing dollars. So that's the number one most important thing. The second most important thing is that you need to be flexible and run series of experiments. So don't plan. That's why I say don't plan out your you know, entire budget. 
for the whole year. Instead, assume that you're going to run a series of experiments every month and whichever experiments work, you're going to double down on those and you're going to spend more on those in the next month and you're going to get rid of the ones, importantly, stop doing the ones that don't work. So these experiments, these experiments, first of all, they need to be time and budget bound. So for every experiment, say, this is how long I'm going to run this test. And this is how much money I'm going to spend on it. So maybe it's a, a campaign on social media, right? We're going to run it on this social media channel for this long, and we're going to spend this much money. When it's done, what we're going to do is we're going to measure the results. How many customers did we get from this? If you don't have enough time to measure customers, how many leads did we generate from this? Mm-hmm. One, thing, one thing to keep in mind here is if you're selling to large companies, you might have a really long sales cycle, right? Yeah. Not unusual if you're selling to big enterprise accounts to have a sales cycle that's 90 days, six months, 12 months. I've seen companies with 18 month sales cycles. Pretty difficult to run a one month marketing campaign and then wait 18 months to see what the results look like, right? So you really need to just pull together wherever you can get quantitative data on the number of leads that were generated or whatnot but also qualitative information, like talk to your sales team and try and understand, you know, how many influencers and decision makers did that campaign touch? Did it impact them positively? Do they think that it's going to result in deals in 18 months? Right. Mm -hmm. And then the last point is iterate. So it's not just enough to run a single experiment. Well, that was a terrible throw right there. Let's, (laughs) Let's iterate on that. Don't just run a single experiment, run an experiment and do your, sort of your junior high, you know, scientific, what is it, scientific, what's the word? <laughs> scientific method. Oh, your junior high scientific method, right? And change just one variable from the experiment. So maybe take a campaign, run it on one social media platform, see how it performs, and then maybe switch the creative or switch the, the social media platform and test it again. But don't do both. Don't switch the creative and switch the social media platform at the same time because then when the results come in, you don't know w- which result impacted it, right? Is it better or worse because you switch platforms or is it better or worse because you switch creative? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you sound like a marketer um, and you sound <laughs> like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but I am thinking about... A lot of the, the sort of customers that I talk to regularly, a lot of small business owners who are probably listening to this and going like, yeah, okay, yeah, I get it. It all yeah. sounds good. I, I just have no time to think about this. I'm totally. doing all of it. I don't know where to focus. Um, and I, like, I need to delegate. How much money is that going to cost? Do I have enough? Does it make sense? Like, to help talk me through that piece. Or Yeah, so, yeah. So for most small business owners, there's one key person that, I recommend frequently, and this doesn't need to be a full-time hire, but I recommend that you find yourself a Marcom person. Mm. See, you need a Marcom person. (laughs) Marcom is short for marketing communications. And these are people who typically have skills in both writing and design. And if they don't have both of them, then they know somebody who can help out, you know, for bigger projects. Like maybe they write really well and they could do some basic design. They have a design eye or a design sense, but they have work with a designer who could do the more complicated stuff, right? That's pretty typical. But you definitely want to find yourself a Marcom person because they're going to help you produce a lot of the creative you need, whether it's ads, whether it's for content marketing, whether it's, you know, illustrations for your website, they're the people who either can do it or know the people who can do it. Mm-hmm. And I think that there are really two ways that I recommend finding these people. One is that you could talk to other business owners who have put out content or creative that you admire. If you talk to them, they're probably working with a Marcom person because they're often freelancers and you may be, may be able to just become a client of that person as long as you know that, that the other business owner isn't competitive with you. They'll usually you know, take you on as a client if they have time. So that's one way and that's, you know, that's a great recommendation. The second way is to check out uh, Jotful community. So at Jotful, obviously we, we make and manage websites for really small businesses, but we also have this community of more than 1300 now actually freelancers and there are things like photographers, writers, Marcom people, uh, SEO professionals and so forth 
And if you go to jobful.com, you just click on the community button, you can see all of them and you can find somebody near you. So that's another great way to search for a Marcom professional. Yeah, that's right. I, I forgot. We actually wrote a blog post on how to hire your first Marcom person. Um, and I think, you know, some future day, whenever I'm not working with you, guess what I'm going to have? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look for is a Marcom person that also has some tech. Or I'll just clone Dawn. Um, so this kind of person is really important, but I remember that you wrote a blog post on this. Um, so if anyone listening to this wants to read that, the way to find it, you can go um, to our Jotful website and sign up for, we, we do these Monday morning marketing emails. It's five tips every Monday. Um, oh, look, you have a sign for it. Of course, of course I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> prepared um jotful.com slash mmm what does mmm stand for doesn't stand for m&ms oh monday morning marketing monday morning marketing <laughs> uh and so there you can actually you'll sign up and then you'll get these tips mm -hmm. every morning in uh, every monday morning in your inbox and then if you visit um our jotful site and you go to the blog you can see the whole repository of like two and a half years of writing these tips. And basically, if you just like do one of those marketing tips each week, right, yes. you will see results and they're super simple and straightforward, inexpensive. So yeah. anyway, all the things that we promote. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I've learned a lot. I hope that anyone who's listening to us has learned a lot. Um, so glad that you know as much as you do about marketing. I'm just going to hang out with you forever. So <laughs> do let's call, do over, call over the table. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All Take right. Care, everybody. Thanks for joining Detroit Startup Week. <laughs> Bye.